Hello and welcome to the review of Hisense 55U7QF 4K Ultra HD TV from 2020 TV lineup. I've tested the 55 inch version, but the U7QF series is also available in 50 and 65 inches for the European market. There are several videos already published on my channel covering different aspects of this TV, from picture quality to the hands on demo of its smart TV platform. So in this video, I'll summarize my experience after testing and using this TV for a few weeks. Let's get started. Hisense expanded its 2020 ULED line of LED LCD TVs with two new models, U7QF and U8QF. These TVs offer hard-to-believe value considering the price, native Ultra HD 4K screens, full array local dimming with high peak brightness, quantum dot technology, and support for all HDR formats, from HDR10 and HLG to Dolby Vision and HDR10+. In addition to that, U8QF features a native 120Hz panel and can reach higher peak luminance that is sufficient for the Ultra HD Premium Certificate. Both models have Vida U4 Smart TV platform here in Europe, while for example in India they have Android TV. First impressions of the 55-inch U7QF were very positive. The TV came well packaged in the box with many protective filters around the bezel. Once I removed all of them, I was pleased with the aesthetics and the choice of materials. The stand, bezel and the large portion of the backside are made of metal. The bezel around the screen is very thin, except along the bottom, but chamfered edges make it look more interesting. The stand is very simple and easy to install, just make sure you have a screwdriver somewhere close. Physical connectors are facing backwards and sideways. They include 4 HDMI's 2.0B capable of accepting 4K at 60Hz, then there are two USBs, TOS link, antenna and satellite inputs, Ethernet, analog AV inputs and service connector. Connector for Europlug is on the opposite side. There is also a basic cable management implemented at the back and on the stand, so we can hide thinner cables there. Definitely a plus for all who can't stand seeing cables behind the TV. Supplied remote control combines standard buttons with modern features such as shortcuts to the most popular video on demand apps and built in microphone. The remote has plastic buttons with good feedback and was easy to use. I would prefer at least one custom button and some feature that would make the home button stand out more, but other than that, I was happy with it. TV comes with Vida U4 Smart TV platform. Home screen is its central location with shortcuts to apps, content and inputs. Its full screen approach is more similar to Android TV home screen than to more compact solutions from LG, Samsung or Panasonic, where you can browse through the menu and still see the content on the screen. Popular apps are available, but some are definitely missing, such as Disney Plus and local apps. Amazon Alexa is built in and the TV works with Google Smart Home service. Overall speed is good, including quick boot time. Playback of video using apps such as Netflix or YouTube was smooth. If you want to see how the system works in action and get to know many of its features, check my separate video. Coming to picture quality, for this price U7QF exceeds expectations, especially in regards to HDR performance. TV has high native contrast, which is improved even further with well-implemented full-array local dimming. In addition to that, TV can reach high peak luminance, and with the ability to display more than 90% of DCI-P3 color space, HDR content looks clearly better and more dynamic than SDR. I really like the fact that Hisense didn't follow the trend of implementing global dimming, the effect that dims the picture in dark scenes. This effect is present only when local dimming is turned off, but for any of the available local dimming options it is disabled, so we will see the picture of the same intensity regardless of the scene. As with other TVs, here you will also need to switch to some more accurate picture presets than what is activated by default to get more precise grayscale and colors. TV offers a wide selection of controls for calibration, but on my unit not all were working, for example gamma and 20 point white balance adjustments. On the other hand, the color management system was working really well and I was able to get highly precise colors in both SDR and HDR. 
HDR images are generally brighter than what PQ curve specifies, and U7QF achieves peak luminance values at 70% and higher levels compared to 100% signal level. In addition to that, its HDR processing clips details in highlights instead of a gentle roll-off, and there are no options to change this. Overall, the best HDR image was achieved with Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus content, as well as with HDR10 content mastered at 1000 nits. Sharpness of the image is excellent with native 4K content and really good with HD content. Upscaling of standard definition and interlaced signals leaves something to be desired, as it leads to a softer image than what competition offers. Weak points in the picture quality department are motion and viewing angles. The panel has a long response time, so you could see blur even in movies and TV shows in 24 frames per second, especially in darker scenes. Human skin in motion will have traces of reddish color, which can be distracting. You can enable black frame insertion to get higher motion resolution, but at the expense of brightness, added flickering and doubling of objects in movement. For movie content, you can enable soap opera effect in the ultra smooth motion menu and adjust its intensity with a custom setting. For those who want to see content without soap opera effect, I recommend turning off this control. This will add visible judder in the picture, but at least the result will be more consistent than selecting the film option that was smoother but acting strange in some scenes. Viewing angles are narrow, so you need to sit directly in front of the screen or under a small angle to see the highest contrast and color saturation. It is also recommended to sit further away from the TV to avoid seeing glowing corners. TV offers down-firing stereo speakers with average sound quality, Dolby Atmos is supported, and you can use HDMI ARC to send multi-channel audio to the external audio system. This was working well during the test. I like the fact that game mode can be activated for each picture preset, so you can activate it for those that are the most precise and enjoy both low input lag and accurate image. You can also use local dimming control for a negligible increase of input lag. TV does not have HDMI A, LLM, HG, IG or any of the tear-free technologies, but can display 4K up to 60 frames per second, which should be sufficient for many gamers. Ok, time to wrap up this review. U7QF was the first Hisense TV that I've tested and I'm quite impressed with it. I cannot think of any other TV in this price category that offers this level of HDR performance. Build quality is also very good, as is its smart TV platform. The playback of content on video on demand apps was stable, so all you need to do is connect the TV to the internet and start enjoying the content. I did notice some issues on the software level such as some options not working as they should, and I hope Hisense will solve them in the future. If you plan to watch a lot of sports, I would rather recommend that you get U8QF with a faster 120Hz panel. As an alternative, also check Samsung Q70T or LG's NanoCell TVs with wider viewing angle. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Let me know what you think about this TV in the comments, and I'll see you in my next video.